child actors get a bad rap for tragedy, but that's not always the case. Scarlett Johansson is certainly the best case for that. She's a child star that made it out all right. She was the highest paid actress in 2018 and 2019, and is the highest grossing box office star of all time. Her career is particularly interesting because she's acted consistently since childhood and has a wide range. From teen comedy to superhero films to dramas and sci-fi, with budgets ranging from a couple million to more than a couple hundred million. Johansson has displayed an impressive acting range and has avoided being typecast. Scarlett Johansson, 9. She, by all accounts, had a fairly normal childhood. Her father is an architect from Copenhagen, while her mother worked as a producer. Where are you from? New York. We're in New York City, right yeah. here. Oh, well, good for you. How old, uh, how old a uh, uh, girl, woman, girl are girl. you? Yeah. 13. 13, so you're just a kid then. You're just really a kid. Sure. Yeah. She showed interest in acting from a young age, enrolling at the Elise Strasberg Theater Institute and later the Professional Children's School in Manhattan. Yeah, and now I have two big brothers to look out for me. Her film debut was in 1994's North, when she was just nine years old. Her first starring role came just two years later, in 1996's Manny and Lo, and she followed it with starring roles in 1998's The Horse Whisperer and 2001's critically acclaimed Ghost World. He's gonna start crying. Yeah, he should totally just kill himself. Oh, here's one. Oh, but you have to share with a non-smoking feminist and her two cats? I don't know. I kind of like them. She graduated from the Professional Children's School in 2002 and decided to apply to NYU's Tisch School of Arts, a prestigious art school. By this point, she had a dozen credits under her belt. Unexpectedly, though, she was rejected. On one hand, she was probably distraught. On the other, it helped solidify her path. She would now focus on acting. Not long after her rejection from NYU, she won a BAFTA for Best Actress for her role in Lost in Translation, where she starred alongside Bill Murray. Both of them played characters that were at crossroads in their married love lives. The film was a massive success, grossing $119 million on a budget of $4 million and earning rave reviews. She followed that with Girl with a Pearl Earring, which is based on a novel of the same name which itself is inspired by the famous Vermeer painting. The role earned her another BAFTA nomination, meaning she was nominated for the same category twice in one year. However, no one is immune from making films that don't land, and Johansson is no different. She was in five movies that were released in 2004, three of which flopped. The Perfect Score, A Love Song for Bobby Long, and A Good Woman. A Perfect Score is worth pausing on for a small moment. In it, she acted alongside future Marvel co-star Chris Evans. But just because the movies didn't land did not mean that she was the issue. Rather, A Love Song for Bobby Long earned her a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress in a Drama. Her other two roles that year were voicing Princess Mindy in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie and in Good Company, which was a critical and commercial success. I'm gonna get you folks some bread. In 2005, she was in the first of many collaborations with Woody Allen. Her first was Matchpoint, where she plays an actress that has an affair with a married man. The film was successful critically and commercially. In the same year, she also starred alongside Ewan McGregor in Michael Bay's The Island. In 2006, she acted opposite Hugh Jackman in Woody Allen's Scoop, which was a critical flop, though a modest commercial success. Then again, considering Allen's penchant for independent films made on small budgets, it would be difficult to make a movie that isn't a box office success in context. Also in 2006, she had a supporting role in Christopher Nolan's The Prestige, which was based on a 1995 novel by Christopher Priest. 2008 marked her third collaboration with Woody Allen, in the critically and commercially successful Vicky Cristina Barcelona. In the same year, she was also in the music video for Justin Timberlake's What Goes Around Comes Around. Emily Blunt, who was originally supposed to play Black Widow in 2010's Iron Man 2, had to drop out due to other obligations and was replaced by Johansson, who was just 26 years old at the time. This would be the franchise and the role that rocketed her to superstardom and helped make her the most successful actor of this generation. That said, she didn't really have much to do in Iron Man 2. Her role as Black Widow would increase in subsequent MCU films, though. She reprised that role in 2012's The Avengers, a critical and commercial success that would top out as the third highest grossing film in the US and worldwide. 
2013 was an important and exciting year for Johansson. She was in three movies that were either considered one of her best performances or one of the best movies of the year, bar none. In the first, she starred opposite Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the critically and commercially successful Don John. Levitt, who wrote, directed, and acted in the film, said that he had conceived the role of Barbara Sugarman especially for Johansson. Some considered it one of her best performances. In the same year, she provided the voice for oh, the AI what, Samantha what in the play? movie Her, considered one of the best movies um, of the year. Yes, Samantha. Also in 2013, she starred in Jonathan Glazer's Under the Skin. The movie was a passion project for Glazer, who had been working on it for close to a decade. Despite failing at the box office, the movie was a critical success and was acclaimed by many as the best film of 2013, one of the best films of the 2010s, and according to a BBC poll of film critics around the world conducted in 2016, it was also one of the best films of the 21st century so far, clocking in at number 61. It was adapted from a novel by Michael Faber, published in 2000. In 2014, she continued her success in the MCU with Captain America The Winter Soldier. She reprised her role as Black Widow alongside Chris Evans' Captain America and Anthony Mackie's Falcon. The film was a critical and commercial success. I'm sorry. Did I step on your mom? Also in 2014, she played a supporting role in John Favreau's Chef and played a drug meal that ends up getting superhuman abilities in Lucy, which grossed 469 million on a budget of 40 million, though critically was not particularly successful. Age of Ultron and Captain America Civil War were both commercial successes, though it's notable that Johansson never appeared exclusively in Marvel films over the years. All the while, she had other pokers in the fire and would do a healthy mix of franchise films and original films, of big budget blockbusters, mid budget films, and independent films. In 2016, she also had a supporting role in the Coen Brothers Hail Caesar and two voiceover roles, one as Ka in John Favreau's The Jungle Book, I'll keep you safe, and the other as Ash in Garth Jennings' Sing. In 2017, she earned some criticism for playing Major in the live action version of Ghost in the Shell, which I admit I watched and didn't really dislike. This is Major, I'm on site. In 2018, she provided voiceover for Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs. I wouldn't drink that if I were you. It's full of toxic chemicals. How do you know? Because my sister-in-law drank it and her tongue turned black. Oh. And reprised her role as Black Widow in Avengers Infinity War, which she followed up with Avengers Endgame. Her contract for the films helped earn her a rumored $40.5 million and $56 million in 2018 and 2019 respectively, making her the highest paid actress in both years. She rounded out 2019 by starring in Marriage Story alongside Adam Driver and Jojo Rabbit, directed by Taika Waititi. She had no releases in 2020, like so many other actors, but returned to the screen with 2021's Black Widow, which did well critically, but not too well commercially. While she's on board as a producer for an unnamed Marvel project, she says that she's done with Black Widow. The same year, she reprised her role as Ash for Sing 2, and her most recent film was Asteroid City, directed by Wes Anderson. In 2021, following the release of Black Widow, she sued Disney for releasing it on Disney Plus and in theaters at the same time, claiming that it hurt the movie's performance. Johansson, who gets back end points on her films, probably did suffer a loss, though how much of that is explicable by the pandemic versus the simultaneous release is debatable. Nonetheless, she and Disney settled out of court for a reported sum of $40 million for Johansson. It doesn't seem to have injured the relationship significantly, as Johansson is starring in the upcoming Tower of Terror movie from Disney. In addition to her film acting, Johansson has led a number of advertising campaigns, including ones for Calvin Klein, Dolce & Gabbana, L'Oreal, Louis Vuitton, Mango, and Moet and & Chandon. Johansson doesn't show any signs of stopping, with six projects in various stages of development at this point, including the aforementioned Tower of Terror and Project Artemis, an Apple TV Plus production based on the space race in the 1960s.
She's proven herself as a capable actress and one of the better actresses of this generation. I'm excited to see what else she has to offer.